a little bit disappointing after two straight sessions of positive finishes. We did follow overseas leads, so altogether a disappointing session for the Australian share market. And if you break it down across sectors, we saw selling across the board. The only sector which remained unscathed after today was the property sector. We saw a bit of support. So altogether, pretty disappointing. Um, we did start off in positive territory, so in the first hour, briefly on positive ground before sliding during the day. And of course, one eye on those HSBC PMI flash numbers coming out today, and they were disappointing as well. Well, we saw them down at an 11 month low. We saw mainly a pretty big reaction in terms of the US futures, which went from a negative 0.3% reading to a negative 1% reading after those numbers were released. But we are seeing the US futures back to negative 0.3%. So, altogether, it does look like the market's reacting to Ben Bernanke's speech overnight, which really gave a negative tone uh, to markets around the region today. So, uh, picking up again from, from what Michael's saying in terms of a, a technical perspective, obviously, uh, we still very much in that negative trend? Well, we haven't broken that downtrend. The 10th week of the correction, it started on a Thursday and we're at Thursday at the moment. So coming into the 11th week from tomorrow, a 10.5% decrease for the Australian market and still really being driven by those macro factors. We know there is a parliamentary vote on Tuesday uh, in Greece for the uh, medium-term fiscal plan. And if that can be passed, um, then that's seen as the next stepping stone towards an IMF EU bailout. So if we have a look at that uh, medium-term fiscal Fiscal plan. There were some media reports today that there could be a hole, and one of the parts of that plan is uh, agreeing to austerity plans, which are supposed to be about 28 billion euros for 2011 and 2012. So a hole would suggest that perhaps those austerity cuts uh, weren't as 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 uh, large as expected. Of course, they're, they're also looking at an accelerated asset sale plan as well. Over in the U.S., it's going to be quite interesting. I don't think it, uh, um, I saw any investment houses come out to downgrade GDP uh, outlook for this year based on Ben Bernanke's speech last night. We've already seen our uh, cuts uh, happen already so he was a little bit behind the eight ball but one thing I will be watching closely this Friday are the durable goods orders uh, numbers for May. Now, if we have a look at durable goods, it's often seen as a confidence uh, that companies have about the future um, of the U.S. economy. And, and if we have a look at this number, it was actually down 3.6% in April, expecting to see a rebound of 1.6% in May. And I think that's going to be a key indicator and a key view into the confidence that U.S. companies have in terms of the U.S. economy. Our company earnings have been holding up fairly well in the U.S. Overnight, we also heard from FedEx, which came out with a better than expected result but the market just seemed to ignore it for Ben Bernanke's speech. Is it a good deal for Telstra or is it simply they didn't really have much of a choice? I mean, James, initially my reaction would have been that this would have been a positive for Telstra's share price because it removes some of the uncertainty that had been surrounding uh, this deal that they had to come through with, in, with the NBN and finalising some of these details would have been seen as a positive because markets don't like uncertainty. So when looking through the announcement and the reaction in Telstra's share price today, what I tried to drill down into was any new information which came out of the agreement which the market might be reacting to. There's a couple of things uh, that look like they may be negatives. First of all, uh, the pits and the ducks that Telstra owns. It, it will be Telstra's responsibility to deliver them to MBN in a usable condition. And if we have a look at a lot of these pits, some of them have cement with asbestos in it, so they'll need to clear the asbestos out of these pits. So there could be costs related to that. We know that costs in major projects around Australia have been going up. Secondly, if we have a look at the breakdown of these payments, not a lot of it is up front. And if we have a look at the term that these payments are going to be made, made over, it's around about 20 years so it is an extremely long term and if you spread out the payments over that time period there is no immediate uh, bang impact um, in terms of Telstra's share price so I guess just digesting the details and of course there are still risks that this agreement may not go uh, ahead it still needs a triple C approval and that's going to be a very big hurdle as well as, as well as that shareholder vote on the 18th of October it's a breaking one I suppose Julia Lee Murchison Metals well, there's a few companies involved Murchison Metals and as well as Sino Steel, all again relating to this Okiji port and rail infrastructure, which now seems to have a little bit of a question mark. Murchison going into a trading halt off the back of it after what had been a couple of big sessions for it. What did you make of this news? An interesting development. 
If we have a look at this uh, new development, Sino still, uh, the, they've cancelled that $2 billion project because of infrastructure. And if you have a look at iron ore as a business, what you're doing is digging up dirt and then you're transporting it. So a lot more crucial is the infrastructure that's associated that. We've seen that in terms of BHP builders in Rio Tinto and Fortescue, which dominate in the Pilbara region, that it's all about infrastructure. So this Okoji project, absolutely crucial to those Midwest iron ore miners to be able to get their product out. If they don't have this infrastructure, well, it's basically still just dirt in the ground. Now, it is a huge project. Uh, last year, the preliminary estimates were at $5.2 billion. For a company like Murchison Metals, which only has a market capitalization of $350 million, it needs considerable support for this project. They are looking at a mix of debt and equity, but even then, uh, the, 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 the money that, um, that money that would have to be stumped up by Murchison is about $1.6 billion. It's about $300 million short, but that doesn't include any project blowouts that may occur as well. And it looks like another spanner in the works. Sino Steel was going to be a key foundation customer. If it cancels this project, then there's a hole left by Sino Steel as well. So yesterday, we did see Murchison Metal shares up by a massive 22.7% on optimism that we could see the likes of QR National buying a 25% stake um, into the Okoji project, and that would give Murchison Metals cash. But today, of course, disappointment over um, disappointment over that announcement sees Murchison Metals in a trading hold. So when the shares come back online, there's going to be considerable uncertainty and we'll probably see quite a sharp drop.